I told you guys that I'd come back and, and show you the, the flow of this uh, new automatic resin mixing vat that I've been working on. Um, I've gone through like four iterations in four weeks and uh, I just wanted to cover those before I uh, show you the actual flow of the, uh, the pump into the resin vat. Right now I have it set up so that it's flowing into these back ports and it's being sucked back up into the pump through these front ports. Okay, uh, yeah, excuse the mess. I got it set up kind of hokey, but that's how I'm holding it. Uh, that's the peristaltic pump that I'm using. I, I, I ordered a slightly more powerful pump uh, because what I'm working with here is water, so it makes it flow a little bit easier. And uh, you, you guys all know that the resin that we print with is a lot more viscous than just plain water, especially the stuff I'm working with. It actually has a added uh, porcelain powder to it, so it makes it even thicker still and grittier. So uh, um, that's uh, my setup there. Uh, I've actually printed like three different iterations of the of the these molds. There, this is the factory one, or the vats, I should say. This is the factory one. Um, same basic overall dimensions. The only difference is the integral uh, inflow and output flow ports that I got set up in them, uh, in the corners. Let me get something to point with. Yeah, okay, here I'm back. There's a port like this in every corner of this, and uh, same with here. It's just so dark that you can't really see it. Anyways, that's what I came up with. This little red dot here, this is, I got a, an old used FEP in it. It's got a little pinhole in it that I plugged up with super glue just for this testing. I also have it in this trough because uh, the gasket on the underside, I don't have it yet, so it's just leaking. I, incidentally, I've also 3D printed that, that frame that goes on the underside, but there's no gasket on this either. Uh, anyways, uh, if you'll recall, my previous or my original design of this had some integral arms 3D printed in each corner. Well, I had to do away with that because I, I didn't know how I was going to route the hoses, and if these were per permanently pointed in one direction, it would make it difficult to... Uh, run those hoses without getting a rat's nest of hoses inside the uh, the actual printer. So eventually I opted to do away with those and just turn some little brass screw-in pins. And uh, those worked a heck of a lot better. And no sooner than I did that, I thought, a different, thought of a different way of doing it, which even better still. And uh, I'll show you uh, uh, a CAD rendering of that. I haven't made it yet. I'm waiting for the materials to come in, in so I can machine that one into existence. But for the time being, I'm testing with these 3D printed vats. Uh, these are printed out of uh, PTEG. I think it's called a PETG, some people call it. And uh, they're solid, they're printed solid, they're not hollow. Uh, the feel in my hands and everything is, it, it makes it feel like just this alone will work. So uh, I'll be testing that also. I was told by experts, or uh, the resin manufacturers that putting resin in, into something 3D printed, whether filament printed or resin printed, would not hold up. Uh, it, uh, they seem to indicate that it would melt, you know, over time. I don't know how much time, but uh, I don't think they really tried it themselves. They're just going off of their book learning, and I can't fault them for that. They could be absolutely right, but uh, on the other hand, if they haven't tried it themselves, they could be absolutely wrong. So uh, I'm going to try it myself. If, it, if they're right, well, they're right. And if they're wrong, well, maybe everybody will learn something here. Anyways, uh, this is uh, this, what, the third iteration of this. I'll try to put up some photos of the, all the ones that I've gone through. Uh, actually, my very first mixing, resin mixing gizmo that I put together uh, it was one of these here. And uh, see that propeller thing? I had it set up so I could put it in my vat and I could pause my print ever so often and uh, put, you know, put my drill on there, my uh, cordless drill, and it would just spin that. I could slide it back and forth. These wings here are, are made to stop it when it gets certain, a certain distance so my blades don't bang into the side of the thing. But anyways, that's how that worked. Uh, in fact, hold on a second, yeah, I'll show you. When I pause the print, I could open the door, the, the cabinet door of the uh, printer and, and slide my, my cordless in there 
and just do this number here, man, and, and I could slide it back and forth. And that, that worked fine, but my, my ultimate reason for doing this was because I didn't want to babysit these damn prints, especially the longer prints, you know, where they run overnight. You got to wake up a few times a night to see if everything's okay or to manually stick your spatula in there and mix it. I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to be mixing by itself throughout the print process. And uh, another thing with that, with the resin that I'm working with, it's so abrasive that I couldn't put my spatula in there and run it back and forth. It would be like sandpapering my FEP. You know, that's the story behind that. I'm going to fill this resin with, with water, okay, and I'll be right back. The, uh, the vat filled with water. I'm about to turn the pump on. If I got it connected correctly, it should be, let's see, it should be sucking into these hoses here and blowing out through the back hoses, so we'll find out. Uh, if it's not, it's, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can just as easily flip this around and still get the same effect. Yeah, it's sucking in through these hoses and it's blowing out through these. See the bubbles? I hope you can see the bubbles. Um, man, this little camera, the, the viewfinder is showing such a tiny picture that it's hard to tell. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to squirt some dye in here just to show you. Uh, and I got a, this is alcohol dye, so it flows right to the top. And uh, ideally, I'd want something to, to uh, sink to the bottom. So I'm going to have to squirt it directly into the ports. So you can see how, the, how it's flowing. There it goes. There, can you see it? I hope you can. It's flowing out here. You know, the bad thing about this is I'm going to pinch this one here so that it gets primed. So that they're both... Now we got both of the both of the output ports or the input ports uh, working out the way it should. And I did some flow simulation tests with my computer, and uh, it actually came out spot on with this. I mean, it's mixing the it's this is just water again, but uh, just to show you how it's going to how the uh, pump is causing the mixing of the uh, the dye with the water. So in theory, my resin should mix in the same manner. And I, this is what I'm wanting here. Because uh, the accumulation of the added porcelain that I mixed with my resins, it just uh, settles to the bottom and I need it to be constantly mixing so that I get an even suspended particle mix of uh, additional porcelain powder. And you can see how it's working out. Okay, I, I'm videotaping with my cell phone and and my uh, action camera just to give you an idea of how it's working okay um, I've also tried this with just one input and one output and I actually got a stronger flow but the flow was not uh, evenly spread throughout the, the vat you know it would it would channel it in one direction and leave a void uh, just an example see this see this spiral void with the uh, single input and output, it would be more of a permanent void. And this one here is actually erasing itself as it mixes, I should say. So I'm getting a constant swirl and it's covering the entire uh, floor of the vat, which is what I want, okay? Uh, if I remember, I, I will remember, I will post my latest uh, improved version of this and one of the concerns that I had about this setup here is this tangle of tubes inside the tiny little EPAX X1 resin printer would be like a, a bird's nest you know and and pulling the the vat pulling the vat out of the out of the resin printer after the print was done would be almost impossible with this tangle of, of hoses throughout. So uh, I've redesigned the vat so that each hose comes in into a, just sets down into each corner. So I, when I get ready to pull it out of the printer, all I got to do is disconnect the hoses on the top, pull the vat out, and I'm good to go. Uh, cleaning would be a lot easier with that too. So uh, that's the setup there.
Um, I'm going to try to move the camera. Hold on a second so I can get a, a better shot of this. One second. I don't know if you're getting a good shot of the swirl. But the, uh, the flow of the resin with the pumps that I have set up is, to me, it's just perfect. I mean, it spreads, it spreads that dye throughout the vat so it's not accumulating in one tiny spot like uh, if, we're, if we're creating a vortex in the center where there's more, more uh, porcelain powder accumulating in the center. I don't want that. I want it to be spread out through the whole vat. Um, I think that, that shows you that it, this is actually going to work. You know, the only reservations is uh, with the 3D printed vats that, I, that you're seeing here, uh, I'm not really sure if they'll hold up against being subjected to liquid non-cured resin. And, you know, uh, the, the experts have told me that in, in short order, this, this vat, 3D printed vat, will uh, start to show like a softening, a melting. Uh, I just don't see that. I can't wrap my head around that because these are solid. I mean, they're solid chunks of, of uh, PET G filament printed hot so that they'll bond together as tightly as I can get them. But uh, that's another test that's upcoming. And uh, I'll just fill one of those vats up with resin that I have on hand and let it sit overnight. Let's just see what happens. Um, yeah, so that's it. I just wanted to show you how it's going to work out or how I hope it'll work out, I should say. I'm dicking around with the lights. Um, yeah, that's flowing around pretty good, man. I mean, I wish you all could see what I, what I can see. And I hope it's coming across in the camera, but I don't really know. I'm going to shoot another shot into the... Just so you can see how it's flowing. There it is, coming out the end. See how that works? Now watch it. Watch it swirl around. That's what I'm looking for right there. The only drawback with this setup was that, uh, like I mentioned, or I may have mentioned, um, taking it out of the printer after the printer was done with this tangle of, of hoses and tubes uh, would have been very difficult. Not impossible, but very difficult. And this will allow me to let it print overnight without having to get up at night and manually mix this resin uh, throughout the night, you know, on a long print. Even on a short print, man, I mean, uh, the powder that I'm mixing into my existing resin, it just tends to settle to the bottom fairly quickly, and I need it to stay suspended within the resin formula to get what I'm looking for. And what I'm looking for is an increased heat resistance of the heat resistant resin that I'm using. Uh, so that's it. I'll edit this film, post it. Hopefully it makes sense to you. It makes sense to me. Uh, obviously this is not for everybody. Uh, if you're printing good prints as, you're, as you are with the resins that you're using, even if you mix any additives to your prints and you're printing good prints, don't bother with this. This is not gonna help you at all. But it, it does help me with my projects and that was the main focus of the project. I'll be back once I get farther along.